Hi, in this tutorial, I will show you how to start an activity for displaying the detail view of the selected item from the recycle view. To understand the code I'm using it in this tutorial, and to follow up, please watch these tutorials. On the view holder, which is the list item, once initialized and its layout inflated, attach an event listener object on the entire view holder. You don't have to create an object for implementing onClick method. Instead, the view holder instance will implement the interface onClickListener from the view class. Right click inside view holder body. Generate Override Methods. Select on click. Now we have listener object set on every list item. It is time to start an activity once we click on the list item. Let's create the started activity. Right click on the app folder, new, activity, and empty activity. I'll call it user details. Click Finish. Open its layout file. Add a text view to display the title of this activity. Add constraints for this widget to display it correctly at the runtime. and customize it the way you like. Drag and drop two text view widgets to act as a label for the input text. Add constraints on each of them Change the text Make the text larger Drag and drop two edit text widgets Add constraints for them. Remove the text from them. One edit text for editing user's first name. Give it an ID. And one edit text for editing user's email. Give it an ID. Add three buttons. Add constraints for them. One button is used for going back to the list of users activity. Another one 
for updating the user's record. And the last one for deleting the user's record. Give each of them an ID according to the action they will perform. That's it for the layout. Open the user details activity. Define five objects. Two objects for edit text views and three objects for button views. On creating this activity instance and after the layout inflation, make a reference for the widgets. and set click listener object on each button. The action for the back button is simple. Just call finish so that you can finish the life cycle of this activity instance and you will return to where you were before this activity instance. Before taking an action to update or delete the user's record, you have to know which record you are talking about. User class is only having first name and email. Email values must be unique. No one have the same email address so it could be a way for distinguishing between users but the best way for doing that is by using an ID I'll create a member variable of type universally unique identifier UUID generate getter for this member notice here for every member we have getter and setter only the ID member has just getter because its value cannot be set or updated manually it will be set automatically once we create an instance of the user class so let's create a constructor for this class and inside this constructor initialize the ID In the view holder class, define a member of type UUID for holding the user's ID. Once the adapter binds user object to the view holder, set the member ID to the current user's ID. On clicking the list item, create an intent object. Intent object is used to communicate with the activity manager and activity manager in turn will start an activity based on the information provided by the intent object in the first argument specify the context the context will be this activity instance in the second argument specify the activity you want to start dot class this intent is explicit because we already know the name of the activity we want to start later on we will learn how to use implicit intent for starting an activity from other applications and finally call start activity method and pass it the intent object but wait we still have to pass the user's ID as an additional data with the intent object. It is easy to add an additional data along with the intent object. Just call put extra method. 
and specify the key of the data and the data you want to add. Go back to the user details activity. Create a member variable of type UUID for holding the incoming user's ID. This activity will be started on behalf of the intent object. So on creating this activity instance, you need to retrieve the user's ID from the intent object. First, get intent object. And from intent object, get serializable extra because UUID is implementing serializable interface. Specify the key of the data and you have to cast the serializable into UUID. Then assign the return value to the ID member. Now we know which user's record to update or delete. Open the singleton class of this application, which is the user space. Users list is owned by the singleton object, so as the operations on that list. Create a public void method for deleting user from the list. Call it delete user. And in this method definition, create a parameter for the user's ID. Loop through the list and check if the user's ID is equal to the past ID. Then remove this user object from the list and break the loop. Create another public void method. Call it update user. This method has three parameters, the ID, first name, and email. Loop through the list and check if the user's ID is equal to the past ID, then update the user's first name and email and break the loop. Create the last method for retrieving user object. Call it get user. Create one parameter for the user's ID. Loop through the list and check if the user's ID is equal to the past ID. If yes, then return the user. If there is no such user, return null. Go back to user details activity. Retrieve user object from the singleton object. Get user by this member ID. And populate edit text widgets with the user information. In the event listener of the update button, we need to get the singleton object and call its method update user and pass it the arguments. Then display a toast message to notify the user that this user's record has been updated. Do the same for the delete button. Get singleton object and call its method delete user. Pass it the member ID. This time we need to finish this activity instance since we no longer have the user object in the list. That's it for now. Run the application. Click on any item. Test the bug button. It works. Let's try to update user number 3. Change the first name. Click on update. It works. Go back to the list to see the changes. Well, the list is not updated. Don't worry, we will cover another topic regarding this matter in the next tutorial. But if you exit from the application and start it again, 
you will see the changes. Anyway, let's try to delete user number 4. Click delete button. As you can see, user number 4 is still there. This is the same thing with the update action. We will fix this in the next tutorial. Exit and start the application again. As you can see, user number 4 is gone. That's all for this tutorial. I hope it was easy to follow and helpful. Thanks for watching.